people of Earth, we know. You all feel like we're the bad guys because my dad and I took over your planet. But you're going to be part of the Viltrum Empire now. That means no one goes hungry, no one dies from cancer, and no one ever messes with Earth again. Look, I didn't get it at first either, but I came around and you will come around too. And in the long run, you'll thank us. But you need to remember, the more you resist, the worse this gets. We didn't destroy your cities. You destroyed them by fighting back. Your new Viltrumite rulers are on the way and it's time to join us in welcoming them. And if you still think you can stop us, don't forget, I'm invincible. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. And we are back. Invincible is back on Amazon Prime. And uh, th- that's what this episode is all about. So finally, we get season two, episode one. It dropped on, I believe, Friday, which is, well, we're doing this the seventh. I can't even remember the dates. That's how bad Friday it is. Friday the first. Uh, no, no, it's the third. No, third. Yeah. So yeah, Friday Halloween was, was a Tuesday. Yep, November third <laughs> on uh, uh, on Friday, November third, it dropped. So uh, yeah, I didn't put out anything out, but we will put out for episodes two, three, and four when they do come out. So that way you can leave some sort of feedback. But you have this in the meantime to cover yourself. And if you haven't watched it, obviously, spoiler full episode. Stop the podcast now. Go watch the episode and come back to us. Unless you like to be spoiled, you know. You could just sit here and listen to us and have our Do whatever your heart desires. Exactly. So, uh, of course, the, uh, you know, this is uh, the Amazon series Invincible created by Robert Kirkman and comic, which was adapted to anime. So if you have not watched the episode, obviously, I already stated it. I'm just reading everything that Jamie had wrote, <laughs> which is funny. But Jamie copied from an old script. It's OK. But everybody gets the idea. And that's the whole point. But Invincible Season 2, Episode 1, entitled A Lesson for Your Next Life. So the synopsis, Jamie, what is it? Mark struggles with his responsibilities as Invincible and encounters an unexpected enemy. That could have been any of the episodes of Season 1. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not the unexpected enemy part. That maybe was only half the episodes of season one. But yeah, yeah. one or two. When you got what, what's his name with the the Cyclops? I forgot his name on that. Wasn't it Cyclops? He had a, wrong? I I don't know. I forget. I Seth Rogen voiced him. <laughs> That's all I remembered. It was like he was pretty cool, and he he misunderstood uh, Mark. And he got into a fight. And then next thing you know, they're sitting on a meteor and they were having a conversation. I have to be honest. I love podcasting on Amazon Prime shows because you can pause and you can see exactly what every character is named because my brain does not keep names in. So (laughs) it is a benefit. And I do agree with that, too, especially when you get to see the actor's name and who they are applying to. Because you got Ross Marquand, Walter Goggins. Uh, We have obviously, you know. Stephen Young, and uh, we we got um, J.K. Simmons back as Omni Man in this particular episode. So, spoiler and, there, everybody. <laughs> and our new addition for the season, Sterling K. Brown, who I love. And Sterling K. Brown plays Angstrom. Yep. Yeah, pretty cool. And it was a good voice in addition to it. Yeah, he, uh, it's, it was a perfect voice for it. Yeah, which is an alternate version of a character that we already know, obviously. But, yes. Uh, initial thoughts. What were your initial thoughts about the episode overall? I am so glad we're back with the show. I forgot how much I really enjoy it. Yeah. I hadn't had time to go back and watch the old season, the first season again. But the story's captivating. The art is gorgeous. And there's gore. And I love gore. <laughs> 
Uh, I feel the same way. Obviously, I love gore too, but uh, the fact that they, they could do it with so much ultra violence, as I like to call it, in, in the animation form, and they could get away with it. And on top of that, less CG yeah. <laughs> or, or practical effects at that point, but they could do it in, in a in a way of telling so that way it's not in your face and it's not upsetting to some people because some people don't like the sight of blood, but. I really did enjoy the episode because in the very beginning, it's kind of a twist because we see an alternate world where I fell for that. You did. I yes. knew right away. I was like, as soon as they saw, I was like, wait a minute. I remember where we left off and that was more bloody as hell after literally, you know, beating the crap out of his father and his father gone. And, but that I still have you. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yep. So I thought, yeah, it was possible he went to the dark side. No, I I knew that wasn't going to happen. I I knew this was some sort of alternate universe. Now with everything that's going on with the MCU, DCU, everything else, everything's multiverse. So this was I knew it was a setup right away. But it was really eerie though to see Mark in cahoots and being father and son taking over the Earth. And we get to see that perspective of what Earth would be like while they take over, waiting for the rest of Viltrum to come take over the Earth itself completely and enslave the human populace. So it was it was a nice way. Plus, we did get to see a different version of the rebellion of the guard, Guardians of the Globe. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Mark kills them too along with omni man except for eve who he winds up paralyzing in that that Dude. universe when he when omni man said to him oh is that what you were practicing on the protesters yeah what meaning that he's been doing it he's completely turned but he still had an affection for eve to keep her alive and that oh was the whole God. point why he was practicing so oh it's still a God. bit it's a bit sick and sinister even on Mark's part in this alternate universe. Now, my question is, are we going to see alternate universe Mark face Mark from our universe at the end of this? It would be interesting to see that as well as see Omni man come in into play from that universe as well, because we know that uh, we have immortal. He's back. After they pieced them back together last season, at the end of last season. And uh, <clears throat> I, I did enjoy the overall aspect. I love the, seeing the Guardians of the Globe together. Uh, I love that we do have a new villain in the making. We we see the development of that, that yeah, character. Yeah, we don't always we don't, start with the origin story. No. It was kind of nice to see it from the get-go and watch him go bad. Yeah, even though he re he recruited a couple of bad people we know from the first season, Mahler and Mahler too. <laughs> I love the Mahler twins. The Mahler twins are funny, and then then we get everything else involved regarding the chaos and and everything, especially Mark's issue of wanting to be with the Guardians of the Globe and doing it, and Cecil trying to parent him due to the issues and it's only been what six weeks or something like that since yeah. since uh the issue with omni man and everything and all that had it happened so it, it cecil is trying to be more of a parent with him with his superpowers and how he should handle mentally because i think cecil doesn't want to have another omni man on his hands and i don't think he trusts mark I think he trusts Mark to a degree. To a degree. But I don't think. But Immortal doesn't trust him at all. <laughs> well, based and, on how the episode started in the alternate universe, I don't, I can understand why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there, uh, we're going to bring up uh, uh, things that we did like within the episode itself. But uh, as our discussion points. Obviously, you listeners have watched it. If you haven't, we're going to bring up some cool scenes, things that we liked within the episode and where we think this is going to go. 
because uh, there was a little bit more character development within it that I'm glad that we got. And uh, I'm, uh, I kind of have a few snippets of uh, character developments, uh, especially a love interest that's there that we knew from last season. And then on top of that, uh, caring from other characters, as well as, uh, well, we didn't really mention it, Mark's mother going through her whole issue, too, oh, after yeah. all said and done. So, but uh, Jamie, you, what was your, what's your first, like, point that you like to bring up that that you liked about the actually episode. debbie was my first point oh um, okay cool <laughs> so that works out really well um it not just the gore with this but the character development and the just dealing with this is an adult comic this oh, is yeah. an adult cartoon this and seeing debbie as and all her emotions and she's got no one to tell until olga finally shows up um, and just her being crushed. Um, I mean, she finds out her husband's an asshole <laughs> and thought of her as a pet. Yeah. But well, the also, fact that he points it out too back then and she he said it to her, you were a pet and for 20 years. Yeah. Like, but also you've got this relationship, like it doesn't matter how much of a jerk your husband was. Like you're, you have to mourn this marriage. You have to mourn the loss, mm. and she's just alone. She's had no one, and it's just, it just hit really hard. Like I felt so bad for her, it, and it, she's still also pulling it together to be a great mom yeah. to Mark. Yeah, and she's still, yeah, she's there to comfort her own son. Understands about him, and it's really a mother's love for her son. And she's more concerned about him than she is herself. It's not until we see Olga show up. And, you know, I love how Debbie thinks that Olga's going to kill her. (laughs) She goes, I wouldn't use a knife. I would use poison. (laughs) Also true. (laughs) But I I thought it was nice that she was there to help comfort Debbie. And then yeah. state, you know, yeah, he was an asshole. You need to let go and you you need to live your life and just try to put that behind you because you got a lot more to live for, which is really good of her. It's being a friend because, yeah. you know, regardless of her husband being killed by Omni-Man too. But that, that was the whole thing. And, you know, the fact that, you know, I think we're going to see more of Debbie involved with Mark's life. Especially now that he got into college. Right. <laughs> so uh, towards the end, we find out him and I, I think, what, what was it? Amber? Amber, yeah. Yeah, they both uh, open up their uh, uh, their acceptance letters or the letters from the college that they wanted to go to. And he was hoping that they both got into the same college and that's how they were going to do it. And uh, he was so happy, you know, even though she goes, you know, what did she say in the very beginning? It's like, I didn't get in. <laughs> and then he turned it around and then he goes, I got in. It was like, awesome. Yeah. So, and then now he could imagine that. So it's a, it's a healthy relationship for him. I yeah. think, you know, it is, uh, she is human, but she does understand. Everything. So she's his pet. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think he's her pet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully she trains him the right way to be a good person you know (laughs) i'm not saying that in a bad way but you know no she's a good she's a good match for him but a lot of guys do need a woman to guide them (laughs) coming from somebody who knows (laughs) (laughs) and i'm not married or have a girlfriend so (laughs) but um for me uh I I have like uh, a bunch of notes regarding this, but uh, when it comes to uh, the multiple more maulers that we do get within it, and I love how Angstrom and his because uh, uh, he comes from an, uh, an alternate universe, he wants to gather all the other Angstroms from the other multiversal worlds to come together to feed because they have more knowledge of with their own mini multiverse of their own in their own universes. So he wants to combine all their thoughts so he could 
be in control and have their abilities and their thoughts and to do what he needs to make the world a better place. But he enlists the, uh, the, the Mauler twins. And at the very end, we see multiple Maulers and he goes, I feel betrayed. You said we were the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> I love looking at all of the Maulers. Like they had them all different. Like yeah, they were all tell. different. One looked Instead like a robotic of, one. One had a, a beard and hair. Yeah, one with the huge boobs and muscle on her. She she looked like a She Hulk. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, and Angstrom too. Like it, they were all obviously different. Like that takes a lot of work. Instead of just, you could easily make them all look the same and be just a tiny bit different. But they, the animators, put a lot of work into making them all look very different. Like you immediately knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. They each told a story like it was. And they each so all well had done. their own personalities, too, even yeah. though they one of the same of the same Mauler because th- it's the same character, just different variations of them. But the, yeah. it's something that, that, yeah, it's it's, you know, kind of like if you look at when we cover Loki here, uh, the different versions of Kang or, uh, you know, uh I'm forgetting uh, <laughs> the, the other versions of, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Timely or whatever, uh, different versions of Kang, literally. But at least they give them individual personalities. And when they're working together, uh, I, obviously within live action is a little bit different. But in this case, they can easily create a multiple animated versions and have multiple different voice actors do it. Yeah, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, anything else? Uh, Mahler twins were my big one. <laughs> no, they were my number three. Oh, uh, okay. My, I like I I love the Mahler twins. Like I liked them last season. I still like them. Like they're they're, they're humorous. Bad guys. Yeah, they're yeah. fun. They're yeah. yes, they're bad guys, but they're not they're not evil. They're just out for themselves. Yeah. Which there's a fine line between that. I mean, you know, yeah. you'd still rather have somebody who was a little more selfless, but sometimes having, you know, people who are just looking out for themselves is still pretty. Yeah. There, there's a dedicated thought within the Mueller twins of like, they, they just want wealth and power and whatever. Yeah. But- and the- the running joke of you don't know who's the clone and who's the original. It's always constant with these two. <laughs> Which I don't know now. Okay. So the end. Mm-hmm. Where the we have one Mauler. We don't have Mauler twins anymore. We have one Mauler. Correct. And he's I couldn't tell if he was damaged or if he fused with his brother. Like, is it two in one right now? Or is it a I'm damaged- confused too. Or is it a damaged one? And if we have a damaged one, is that damage going to go through on the clone? And therefore, we don't have that joke anymore. Or we're going to know which one's a clone and which one's not because one's going to be damaged and one's not. Hmm. Maybe he'll have multiple personalities because he's got uh, two in him, and we don't know yeah. yet. Because the the conversation is, look at what you've done to me. Because yeah. half his face is kind of um, mutated, and the other half is pretty much normal. And he's got a mutation to it, just like Angstrom, because Angstrom, if you look at it, it's like as if all the Angstroms that were in that experiment to combine are now in his brain. Yeah, in his brain, it got to the point of even physically, he looked like something out of Basket Case, but 10 times bigger. If you remember that movie back in the early 80s, that horror movie, Uh that was actually about twin brothers too, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in this case, they I, I think they kind of I think the machine kind of melded uh, Angstroms, Pete, uh, like the different Angstroms together, and then probably the same way well, that might have what happened to the Mahler twins. They might have melded together. So yeah, that's what I was trying to. I couldn't quite. I wasn't entirely sure what they were trying and I'm sure we'll find out next season, like the next episode. I'm pretty early, sure. Too. And I'm excited to see it. Yeah. But I couldn't quite tell. And I don't know if it was just me or if no. it, they were just not being blatant with it as to whether it was the Maulers combined or one with a lot of damage. And either way, I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Yeah. Same here. Uh, One 
one thing I really did enjoy, and it's a scene with the Guardians of the Globe when they're fighting the giant. And uh, you love all things because it's such a comedic kind of thing. But uh, even Robot states it's like he's got the uh, mental capacity of an eight year old because he <laughs> screams out. He goes, I just want to be president of the Amer- of United States of America and an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. There was uh, a point in my life where those were my career goals. I think uh, everybody had that <laughs> at one point. Uh but I, I thought it was pretty cool how they all come together collectively and were able to dis- dispatch him as well. But during that fight, we get uh, Rex talking to Robot and uh, we see them come together. And that's where the relationship part of it comes to, because we saw that relationship last season in the first season. Yeah. And uh, we know Rex was dealing with the issues of, whenever she changes it depreciates her life and robot kind of found a way to fix that for her so she's a a girl but you know instead of aging up like she does after time every time she turns into rex then you know he kind of stopped that aging process but this is uh the real robot at this point but he's a boy inside the robot suit so he's still trying to learn to be human at times and eh. it's more scary like feeling fear for the first time like actually being out there being able to be hurt versus being a computer screen yeah and that's and he describes it to her and he she's kind of laughs and uh, as the wreck she goes uh, to robot don't worry you'll you'll get used to it just like the first time you used the toilet <laughs> 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 But uh, it, it's nice to see that. But also there is uh, compassion into it and, and uh, a love there for him. And, yeah. and you can see that, too, when Rex saves Robot because he was having that kind of panic attack inside the suit. And that's why he froze and was sweaty and didn't know how to react. So I, I really did enjoy that because you do see that relationship and you're going to see it progress, I think. And uh, hopefully it's not devastating in the end because we know how this show could be or these comics could be Seriously. at times. But uh, also through that, after that situation, though, we have uh, Cecil putting Immortal in charge of the new Guardians of the Globe. And Rex is not mm-hmm. having it with bringing Bulletproof into the group. <laughs> yeah, that group is struggling. Yeah. So they, they're still kids and they're still learning to react and learn. Uh, Adam Eve obviously is not there. She wasn't there for that fight from what I recall. Nope. So, but they're all trying to learn to work together, which they did Rex at the end, uh, not Rex. Um, uh, who was it? Uh, I just said his name. I'm an idiot, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was Rex at the end. I got yeah. the I got the girl wrong with Rex, but I don't know. I, I forgot her name when she turns. But re- regardless, Rex is the one that came at the end with the bombs around the the giant's feet to drop him down into the sewer. So I got the wrong character before that was talking to robot. But I knew who you were talking about. It's fine. Uh, exactly. I'm sure listeners too. But if you're first time listening, you can yell at me later in comments. <laughs> but uh, I um. I like that, you know, the fact that, you know, we do have him and Immortal is just acting like the typical captain of the team and get barking orders. Be ready in 30 minutes. I have your attendant. It's like right there. He's there to get things done because he's got an agenda because he doesn't want it to be like the previous Guardians of the Globe that was there. Plus, uh, at that time, he was under Omni-Man's thumb. Omni Man was in charge at that time, so you know he, now he's in charge. But he also has uh, a little anger in him, as yeah. we all know. <laughs> he's been around a you know few hundred years, <laughs> a few hundred or a thousand years. I forget. That but, was a few thousand. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, he was also I chopped up the, the bits and then brought back together. Yeah. <laughs> I would now, be that crew's uh, got, a sour. That crew's got a lot going on. Oh, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, character building and team building within that. 
during that yeah. time. And and then obviously Mark getting Cecil's approval to come back to help out. And thus happen what happens at uh, Angstrom's lab with the Maulers and that encounter. And then we see the devastation on Mark because he sees all the blood. It's all over his face. And then Cecil and the rest of the Guardians are trying to say, hey, they brought this upon themselves. We were there try to stop them from doing something worse. Mark, you're taking this too hard, which is showing caring from them. But it's also showing growth within him because he's showing remorse for what's going on in comparison to what we saw in the very beginning, which was his alternate version that was just killing blatantly with no remorse, except for one person. But right. yeah, it, it, I, I think it's, this is a great setup for something that we might see come to head to head with different versions of Mark. Yeah. I'm really excited to see this unfold. Yeah. Same here. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about it. What I have for notes uh, overall, uh, we already talked about you. You talked about your points, which are very similar to mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. The only I, thing I didn't mention uh, the use of karma police in the alternate in the opening. Oh, alternate yeah. Reality I my scene. notes, too. Yeah. My radio that, head. Was, that was brilliant. That that was a segue from seeing the multiverse. But Mark flying and doing all the good deeds that he could do as a superhero yep. on his own without Cecil's you know understanding or being in charge of him so and Cecil knew that he was doing all this stuff you know he putting out the fire on a rig with the water from the sea uh stopping that elephant looking dude which I thought was pretty cool <laughs> and then there was a couple of others somebody with lava in their mouth spraying it all over and, and, yeah. and stopping them as well so there are other mutants out there or, or vil super villains. So, yeah, I, I did enjoy that, too. I'm not a huge Radiohead fan, but I do enjoy that song. It was used brilliantly. Yeah, it was. It fit perfectly to the scene and how Mark was feeling, if you think about it. Uh, and, yeah, it worked. And then my only other thing was, um, I don't know if I just missed him because I only got a chance to watch it once. But where mm -hmm. was William, my favorite? Good question. Hopefully he'll come out. <laughs> he oh. was my favorite last season. And I didn't see him. Well, I don't have any other notes. The only one I would have would be Amber saving Mark from Todd. Because Todd was like, oh, sorry about your father. He looked like yeah, a Yeah, but big... he wasn't being an asshole. To some degree. He goes, oh, I'm surprised <laughs> those jeans didn't wear on you. Your father was a diesel looking dude. And <laughs> it's like, oh, he died. And, blah, blah, blah. and you could see the look on you know, Mark's face and he was getting yeah. upset because he couldn't control it. And he didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to talk about it. And and it, I think it was because the, the way they made Mark's real father die was through an accident because that's, you know, the school doesn't know that, right. You know, Omni man was Mark's father. So, but Mark couldn't, it, it's one of those like Buffy, the vampire slayer issues of like, she is, hurting over something maybe angel killed a friend or mother i don't know <laughs> but it yeah that's a different podcast on podcastica <laughs> but it, it gives it gave me those feelings of like when a hero has been hurt in their own personal life but it also is uh also in reference to what they do in their superhero life but they can't talk about it because the other person doesn't know Right. And and it's such a, a hard thing to see, but Amber knew and Amber kind of like blocked it away. Well, and, she knew yeah. he didn't want to talk about it. And Todd was not being an asshole, trying not to be an asshole, but yeah, just couldn't it, read the room. It was inadvertently being an yeah. asshole. Uh also with uh Eve talking to Mark as well, saying, Yeah, you know, if Cecil can't understand that, then you need to do something. So she she goes, I know you've been doing all these things. And she goes, then talk to Cecil. You need to be part of that. And then he wind up doing it. And then he was like, get this man an earpiece. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, kind of like the Captain America thing in Endgame or Infinity War. Get this man a shield. <laughs> but uh, I have a few other quotes. Uh, one of which came from Mauler's 
uh, molar two to molar one. And it's when they're in prison, when they see uh, the portal show up and he goes, molar two goes, did you? And Mauler One's like, oh, yeah, I ship portals now. Didn't yep. I tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> and they just go. <laughs> Leave it to the Mauler Twins. That was my favorite quote of the show, too. Oh, okay. Did you have any? or? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I had that one. And oh, then, sorry. Uh, oh, no. It was a great quote. One of us was bound to get to it. Um, I can't force you to help me, but I can leave you here forever or somewhere worse. Like, that was a good like you don't have to do what I'm saying, but your life's gonna suck if I don't, if you don't do it. Yeah. And, but then the Maulers followed that up with, "I miss when we only worked for ourselves." Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have one more. That'll be the last one I have. Uh, I don't. Need, it's Mark saying to Cecil, "I don't need your permission to be a superhero." And then Cecil's response is, "You know who else said that? Your dad." Meaning that Cecil didn't want another Omni Man on his hands, and that Mark needed to heal before he actually came back mentally and to deal with his own father's death and his family before he could go back into doing superhero work. But uh, I think Cecil saw an opportunity for Mark to show and prove himself, and that was what we saw at the end. Unfortunately, it resulted in a new villain. <laughs> yes angstrom levy which okay so my last quote goes with yours which is i'm not my dad <laughs> <laughs> um but okay angstrom we didn't really touch on this yeah is wrong he did it he took off the helmet yes mark showed up and screwed things up yes but angstrom taking off the helmet is what messed everything up mm. he did it to himself he did and he didn't realize he was he created himself being a villain in yeah. the end because now everything he says it flat out. And that was part of my notes is like Angstrom's out just for revenge right now. He's doing the exact thing that he didn't want happen to other people, but he's going to cause it now, which is bloodshed, which I didn't know that I necessarily believed his, Oh, I'm a good guy. I'm just looking for to, you know, heal heal people and take the best from each reality and blah blah blah. I don't know why. I just didn't believe that. And the fact that you can go so evil so fast means I don't think he was all uh, altruistic to begin with. No, I think there was an underlining <laughs> villainous tone to him anyway. Yeah, maybe it was his way of getting the Maulers to make him that way. Uh, he, he yeah, may, maybe subconsciously maybe it was consciously and he just doesn't want to say it outrightly in front of Mahler. Right. At this point we got. Yeah. But it's going to be Mahler interesting 2. to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited to see what happens with the Mahlers. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out and how much he blames Mark when it wasn't Mark. Exactly. Uh, it, it, well, I think a lot of villains always do that at a certain points. You did this to me. Well, you did this to me. The kind of like the Joker and uh, the uh, Keaton Batman and, and Joker goes, well, you did this to me. Well, you did this to me. And so it was Batman yeah. and him together saying the same thing. I think it's but a narcissism thing. It is. It's a guy thing. <laughs> did I say that out loud? Damn it. <laughs> ah, you can cut it out if you want. <laughs> no, nah, I'll leave it in. <laughs> I know I'm you sure, will. I'm sure I like all the other males out there. They're going to be like, eh, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh other than that 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 i think that was our coverage on the episode it, it was kind of quick it was literally almost like 45 minutes total yeah or 40 minutes without credits or, or things of that nature so but uh it does go by quick and that's what makes it easier to go watch it again to pick up little things here and there that you do enjoy. So uh, if you didn't listen, uh, didn't watch the episode, go to Amazon Prime, check it out, and take note of what we we were just talking about. And everybody, everybody has Amazon Prime because everybody has Amazon. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but other than that, uh, right now we're uh, since we covered it completely, we'll just go right into podcast recommendations. Um, I am highly enjoying Strange Indeed right now between the fall of the House of Usher and the Great British Bake Off. 
Awesome. They are just covering two of my favorite things going on right now. Uh, myself, uh, I'm enjoying on podcast uh, the uh, Buffy verse still slang with Penny. And I was on the second episode, which was pretty cool. It was all about Halloween. I look forward to coming back if and when I'm asked to come back by Penny because I do. I I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer show when it was out. I was a big Buffy head. It's funny I never too. Never got into it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My, it's pretty funny though too because everybody goes. I thought you would just love Angel, and I'm like, I wasn't really a big huge fan of it. I have the series. I've watched it a couple of times, but I always go back to Buffy. I don't know why. And it's not because it, it's a girl. I think it has to do with the fact of the empowerment of a girl having powers and then struggling with it as being a teenager. But uh, I've also been enjoying uh, and I didn't even submit any feedback. And I just started listening to uh, revisited. We have to go back Ted Lasso with yeah. Kristen and Ben, and I, I'm getting a good giggle out of it. I didn't even have to rewatch the show as they were covering it. When I'm listening to it in the, in the work vehicle, uh, I'm like, yeah, I remember that scene. Yep, I remember that. And I just like I it just brings and it makes you want to just binge it on a weekend or something if you the first season. But we have I have a think tendency that, in this house to throw on Ted Lasso, either Ted Lasso <laughs> or Shits Creek when there's nothing else on and we just want something on in the background. One of those shows goes on and then we just always finish the series. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, I I would give those recommendations out there. Uh I, we don't really do YouTube recommendations anymore, but uh, if you have any, Jamie, you're more than welcome to. I didn't come with any. Okay. <laughs> but uh, where else can listeners hear you or where they could uh, find you in further podcasts? Um, Currently here. Obviously. Uh, and then I'm going to record with Damien on watched it in the eighties. We're going to be doing ET. It should be out around Thanksgiving. Awesome. And you and I will be covering Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter eventually and getting eventually. that out on adrenaline cinema podcast. <laughs> eventually. Yeah. But got uh, monster yeah. mania this weekend and they've got somebody from Freddy versus Jason. Oh, Kersinger? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's the... Uh, no, Kers no, 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 not Kersinger. Not Jason. One uh, of the um, the cops. The cop's son. Oh, okay, cool. And then Alice Cooper. I met Alice a couple of times. He's awesome. Yeah. But... Because uh, he's the first uh, song ever put in Friday the 13th that wasn't created for Friday the 13th. It was created for Friday the 13th. But I mean, it was not like like a legit singer, not just a soundtracky yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. The Man Behind the Mask was huge for Friday the 13th Part 6. Was it 6? Yeah. 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 Because it wasn't Kane yet. Nope. It was CJ Graham. Yeah, that one. Yeah, we're nerding out everybody. Yeah, as you can tell, this is what we do on the Journal <laughs> Cinema podcast. If you don't listen to that, CJ Graham is actually going to be there too, and they're doing a photo op with Alice Cooper and CJ Graham in costume. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. And CJ's actually really cool. His lines usually aren't that huge. The last time I saw him at Monster Mania, yeah, I've met he was him. Very I accommodating and really nice. Talked to him talk a few to. times. Yeah, yeah, he's really cool. But uh, yeah. You could hear me here, obviously, on Panels to Pixels podcast with doing Invincible. Rob and I will be finishing up Gen V, which uh, I think we're going to just combine a lot of the, the remaining episodes together, as well as Loki season two with uh, Steve Brown. He and I are going to cover five and six together. By the time you get this, I would have already had episodes three and four coverage for Loki season two out as well. Sorry for the delay, everybody. It was been ever since I got back from Massachusetts. It's been crazy. So you were in Massachusetts? I was in Massachusetts with you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was our podcasters retreat, as I usually tell everybody when I do these kind of things. It's pretty funny because the majority of us there have been on podcasts or do podcasts. <laughs> but we had a good time and a drunken good time. And yeah, as you could tell, Jamie yeah. and I 
a horror fans and she she had a bunch of de- a deck of trivia cards which was so yes, funny that we were drunkenly playing <laughs> But she, she was like, you got that one. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. One. <laughs> <laughs> or I'd read it and I'm like, oh, that's a gimme. Like, I don't want to read this. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying to train your boyfriend, Tony, on that stuff. <laughs> He's not bad. It's good. He's learning. He's finding out. He's learning. But, He's uh, got to learn about a podcast. He doesn't really. He's just finally after this week, the Boston weekend started jumping into podcasts. So maybe he'll actually listen to some of mine. There you go. He's listening to Rima and Pig and Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to listen to yours and yeah. give and, and send some feedback, hopefully. Well, I've got to do something he's interested in. So there's that. Too. That is true. Yeah, yeah, that is true. But yeah, you could hear me here, obviously, on Panels to Pixels podcast with all the multiple other stuff that we do, uh, as I mentioned. And you could hear me on Final uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition with Rob, Adam, and Frank. So uh, you guys know what's going on there. It's literally a fantasy pick of movies for a certain genre, top fives, or if we uh, decide to try to change a movie that was really bad in the theater or just had poor reaction, how would you fix that film? Music, script, actors, director, what have you. And that's usually what we do there. That's Rob's podcast on uh, Pyrocore Entertainment, so you can check that out. Uh, All you have to do is go to PyrocoreEntertainment.com. And as well as you can hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So uh, what we have out currently is uh, I put out The Wolfman. Unfortunately, that was late, obviously, due to Massachusetts and me being busy coming back to work. So I didn't get it out for Halloween, but you got it nonetheless. It's still out there. Ben Elmore and I had covered it. Uh, And as well as Total Recall, the original 90 version, not the uh, the remake that was out there. So uh, Jason Kabasi, who is uh, head of podcast, uh, the podfather himself, joined me on that. We talked about and reminisced about Total Recall. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, I will let you guys know exactly what's coming out. Like I said, Jamie and I intend on doing Friday the 13th final chapter. Jerry and I look forward to doing at least... Uh, one other apes movie and there's a couple of other people that are in uh on the list that i have to bring back to say hey remember a long time ago you said you do this so i'm gonna bring them out there but you could always uh send in suggestions too for that particular podcast so if there's something that you want us to cover because obviously we cover anything action adventure fantasy thriller suspense basically anything gets your adrenaline going just send it there. Just send us a suggestion on the Facebook page, uh, which is suggest easily. Suggest a movie. Suggest who should cover it with a, with Mark. Or do you want to cover it? <laughs> or do you want to cover it with Mark? <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't matter. I I, I accept anybody because anybody get, at this point can guess. It's, it's an easy format. But, uh, yeah, you can check that out, too, as well on PyrocarEntertainment.com. And Mark is the best co-host. He does all of the heavy lifting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a bodybuilder by far. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. But uh, other than that, just to talk about that, like I said, if you want to suggest anything to submit your feedback here, literally all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Generally, I put an image with this one. I didn't. But when I put an image of what we're covering next, I say leave it in the comments below that image. Do so. Send it there. You could send a messenger through there, uh, Facebook Messenger, if you prefer as well. I get those as well. Uh, we, You could email us, panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So it's panels. Two is spelled out, T-O, and pixels in the number one at gmail.com. Just write out a texted email. We'll read it on the podcast. It could be related to what we're currently doing or something that we have already done that you've heard before and it's all accepted and we'll reference it and we're a tangent we went on during this podcast that too (laughs) (laughs) you can also send audio yeah as well all you have to do is record yourself on the device that you're at your phone your tablet whatever and just send that as an attachment uh to show the love if you could please uh send some sort of rating uh or review on apple podcasts spotify 
because we could be found easily on those. And Apple Podcasts seems to be the one player of choice that everybody is able to attain or figure out where to listen to uh, your podcast. Uh, a five star would be greatly appreciated. But I always ask everybody to be honest. Uh, you could also find us on YouTube. So all I have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast. Keep that in mind, podcast at the end, because <laughs> uh, Josh has the regular panels to pixels that's out there out in England. But uh, I love what he does, but you want panels to pixels podcast, just search for it. I put out the podcast as is if I'm doing an interview or any video thing, it'll be up there. You can check it out. Uh, you can see probably panels that I've done like with Tony Moore. Uh, I think I linked everything from adrenaline there too. You could see the interviews with uh, the comic book men themselves, Mike and Ming or even Kevin Smith himself. So I'm looking forward to do more interviews in the, in the near future. I just got to reach out. The SAG after strikes hopefully will come and go away. Dude, why is that still going on? I know. I think they're coming to some sort of uh, an agreement. Uh, They've soon. been saying that for weeks now. I hope so, but <laughs> I'm hoping to at least get somebody back on. Hopefully I could get Ross Marquand on, who uh, I've written recently, but uh, he knows me. And he knows my voice and my name. Hell, he did the intro to Panels to Pixels, which I should actually use. Again. Should use that, yeah. <laughs> he did introduce us. I got him at a Walker Stalker when he was doing the voice for Red Skull. But anyhow, yeah, while you're on uh, YouTube, literally just click the subscribe button if you're interested in doing that. Hit the bell so you're notified with anything and then give a thumbs up. It's really greatly appreciated. And also word of mouth helps us to get more listeners. So if you have a friend, tell them, and then they'll be able to hear us. So with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Jamie. This was Panels the Pixels podcast. So keep in mind, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.